Yikes. Yikes. Endangered species. Most of us know about the cute, larger animals, like tigers, whales, and elephants. And although these creatures desperately need our help if they want to survive into the 21st century and beyond, there's also a less talked about group of animals that need our help too. Chelonians, which describe all turtles and tortoises, are the most endangered group of vertebrates on the planet. Today, we're going to show you about 20 different species in which eight are considered endangered. Animals are my passion. It's as simple as that. I've grown up around animals of all different shapes, sizes, colors, species, and attitudes. My greatest goal in life is to protect the animals that I've grown up to love and coexist with. But I can't do this alone. I hope to share their beauty and importance with all of you. You're watching The Rooster Sanctuary. Alright guys, so here we're at ADD Reptiles with Mike Renault and Erica Marcus. And so as you can see over here, we're kind of in a rebuilding phase here. Uh, we're building a lot of tortoise pens and um, you know a lot of new enclosures for the animals. So uh, a lot of the enclosures you're going to see the animals in are very temporary. They'll be in their new enclosures very soon. And so yeah, so here, this is uh, the next project we're working on. This is the tortoise pens. This is going to be like a two layer rack system. We're going to have this bottom layer. And then we're going to put this thing on top, actually we're going to put, yeah, we're going to put this thing on, on top of this, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so this will be a total like tortoise corner and if we open the, up the garage in the summer, they, they'll be able to get both heat and UVB. So uh, we put a lot of thought into this and uh, yeah, we're getting, getting started here. But uh, so we'll take a, take a look at some species here. Over here in this big pen, these are Greek tortoises, Iberian Greek tortoises. This is a locale Greek tortoise. This is the female right here. Beautiful animals here. Uh, the male's in here somewhere. But uh, yeah, so these are just a really cool uh, species of tortoise. All right, guys, back here with Michael Renault, ADD Reptiles, the man behind the mission over here. Behind the madness. Yeah. So uh, over here, this is a, the tortoise setup that we got here. Uh, we're just starting it out. Um, and in this enclosure, we have a Forston's tortoise. This is one of the endangered species I was talking about. And uh, here's an elongated tortoise, the little uh, little guy next to him. These guys are in the same genus here, Indotestudo. This is Indotestudo elongata and Indotestudo forstenii. So why don't you tell us a little bit about these species, Mike? Well, <laughs> uh, both very tropical species. Uh, this guy is obviously just a little hatchling. Oh, Got him not too long ago. Uh, the four sins is about well, maybe like a year old. Probably a yearling. Yeah, yeah something like that. Um, he does have a miss scute right yeah. there, which doesn't really affect the health of the tortoise at all. Nope. Very Just common. A cosmetic flaw. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, they come from a very humid environment, so they do a lot better when provided this, you know, the same captivity. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of humidity. Uh, a lot of hides. They don't really like bright light. A lot of the times you'll find them in the wild under the canopy. Yeah. So they don't really receive too much sunlight in the wild, but they still do benefit from UV. They love radiation. hanging out in the leaf litter and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they definitely appreciate a lot of hides in the in the cage. Alrighty, cool. So we'll move on next door here. So next door here we have a ivory sulcata. I'm sure you guys know the regular sulcatas. I'm sure you see them all the time. But uh, yeah, this is a little ivory here. We'll put this guy down for a second. Grab this guy, he's got a nice cream color on him. Just a beautiful, beautiful morph actually. These guys, you don't find these guys in the wild like this. This guy's captive bred. And he has a little uh, neighbor here. This is a pancake tortoise. These guys are kind of found in the same area. Um, they're both from Africa, both African species. These guys are really cool. Um, as you can see, there's a reason they're called the pancake tortoise. Uh, they kind of kind of the opposite of you know most tortoises, you know, high dome shells. You know, stuff like that. Very soft shells, yeah, very too. Soft Softest shells, yeah. of the tortoises. But yeah, these guys like to hide in rock crevices where they're found. You can actually find, like, multiple tortoises in, like, a little rock crevice. Um, but, yeah, they, they don't move around too much. They're kind of just a chill, chill little species there. All right, so here, down here, uh, we got some red foot tortoises. These guys are from South America. They're kind of from everywhere in South America. There's a bunch of different localities. Yeah, um, there's a few different localities, yeah. but as far as the red foots go, um, these are two of the main, I don't know if it's morphs or localities, but so that one's a cherry head. Yeah, this you can one. See, you just can see his head. From all the red, you can also see that they're pretty interested in my 
Roach food. <laughs> Roach food, yeah. So, Clementine and Rudolph, which one's which? That's Rudolph, Ru that's Clementine. Yeah, okay, Rudolph and Clementine. Yeah, it's just a beautiful species. Um, they have these beautiful reds on them, as you can see. And, you know, they're from South America, so they like high humidity. They're uh, omnivorous. They enjoy, oh, cool. yeah. No, they enjoy every once in a while. Once in a while, yeah. Yeah, pinky or some type of worm. Uh, they eat sometimes uh, carrion in the wild. Yeah. So it's important to give it to them maybe like once a month. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, just a beautiful species. He got some like marbling here. I don't know what almost. Yeah, looks I like. guess that's a common thing that happens. Yeah, sometimes. when they're babies, sometimes they get this beautiful marbled shell on them. I guess as they grow older, yeah, it disappears. All right, guys. So here we have sort of the kings of the tortoise world. Uh, this is the Galapagos tortoise, one of the uh, prized animals you can get in the pet trade. Uh, these guys go for around five thousand dollars as hatchlings. So. Pretty, pretty amazing tortoise here. This guy will one day, could one day potentially reach 200 years old. Yeah, very has a huge long, longevity on these guys. Um, so you know your grandkids will be taking care of this. <laughs> It'll be their burden. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, just a beautiful, like one of the pr just gems of the tortoise world. Like we said, these guys get huge. Males can get up to six, 650 pounds. Um, and this is one of the other endangered species. These guys are actually one of the most endangered, huh? Well, well just these, because they're found yeah. on so a these select guys, few different islands, so yeah. automatically that puts them at risk. Yeah, so obviously Galapagos tortoise from the islands of the Galapagos off the coast of Ecuador. Um, and there's a ton of different localities. You know, the Galapagos is one of the places that, um, you know, Darwin started his research, you know, Grew off of that of his theory of evolution. Oh, beautiful species here. Don't it's see very, very slow often. growing. And over here, slow to mature. The Aldabra tortoise. These guys are from. What is the island called? Aldabra Atoll. Is that is that, what, is that the, the? That's the, one of them. Yeah. This thing is Canary, absolutely. Canary Island. Yeah. Right? This thing is absolutely terrified of everything. Yeah. Sadly, this uh, you know, Aldabras. For some very, reason, when they're small, strange. they're very shy animals and. Um, you know, they actually usually uh, usually they usually grow out of it. But uh, yeah, like we said, these guys are the second biggest tortoise, largest tortoise in the world. Um, they a little bit smaller than the Galapagoses um, as they're adults. But yeah, same thing. Uh, this is a, probably what three, four year animal, year old Something animal. Something like that. Yeah, three or four years old. This girl. But yeah, these guys are from the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. For some reason, she's really skittish, but again, just a beautiful animal. All right, so we got some baby tortoises here for you guys. Who doesn't love baby tortoises? The most adorable, adorable creatures on the planet. Um, so here, I kind of have the African group. Um, this is a leopard tortoise. Is this Pardalis Pardalis? Yep. Okay. Giant South African Giant tortoise. South African tortoise. And over here, these guys are from uh, the island of Madagascar, one of the largest islands in the world. Um, this is the radiated tortoise. Again, another endangered species. Um, and you know. These guys are facing a lot of problems where they come from. Madagascar's government is not very stable. Uh, can switch from you know month to month actually, and there's not much protection on their animals there, um, or at least it's not regulated very very much. But uh, as you can see, it's one of the most beautiful tortoises you can actually buy. Radiated tortoises. They have this beautiful shell on them, and that's why they're so endangered. You know, people, uh, you know, native people walking through the bush, they find a tortoise like this. Um, these things are like. Picking up a gold brick, you know. The monetary value of these guys is insane. Um, they're just a beautiful species from Madagascar. And there's also another tortoise on Madagascar. There's actually two other tortoises um, that are highly endangered there too. The plowshare, which is one of the most endangered tortoises in the world. The most beautiful too, has this gigantic dome shell. And also the spider tortoises. So you know, Madagascar animals are facing a lot of problems. Um, as some of you know, there's also lemurs, lemurs there. Um, lemurs are found nowhere else in the world. In another case of having an island animal, um, you know, always endangered on islands. And over here, we have another group of animals. Did you talk about those, Mike? So these guys are star tortoises. One in front is an Indian star. Right here? Yeah, this, this guy, Indian. little guy. And then this bigger guy over here is a Sri Lankan star tortoise. Um, pretty close in size. Maybe not right now, but later on. Yeah, they don't get too big, but... 
Yeah, pretty small, manageable. There's also another star tortoise, the Burmese mountain tortoise, which is Burmese star tortoise. Yeah, yeah pretty endangered. Um, we don't have one of those, but yeah. not yet <laughs> at least. Show you those. Um, so these guys are the same species, right? Are they just subspecies? Same species, uh, just a different just locality. Different locality, yeah. subspecies, yeah, or whatever. These aren't really tortoises <laughs> that you want to hybridize. Yeah. You want to keep their bloodline as pure as possible. So it's not really good to, especially as adults, uh, mix these species. All right, so here we have the serrated hingeback tortoises. Uh, these guys are a really strange species. As you can see, they got this really, you know, you see where they get their name from. These uh, marginal scutes here have uh, some pretty nice spikes on them. But, you know, this is one of the stranger species uh, you can find in the pet trade. These guys are from West Africa, kind of like the you know, forest. Central Africa. Central, Central mm -hmm. Western. Um, but Yeah, the more forested, yeah, heavily, more forested. Yeah, heavily canopied areas. Yeah, as you saw their enclosure, there's some leaf litter in there. They love to uh, forage around in the leaf litter for stuff. And these guys actually do eat a significant amount of protein. Oh yeah. So, uh, you know, these guys do eat animal protein and they also in the wild eat a lot of mushrooms, which is, uh, most, most tortoises aren't mushroom eaters, which is kind of strange. Yeah, portobellos especially these guys go crazy for. Yeah. It's a good amount of their diet. Uh, as far as leafy greens go, they don't really care for much. It's um, sort of the darker stuff, right? Yeah, more darker greens, uh, some fruits. They go crazy for worms. Yeah. They'll also chase down crickets. Yeah, because these guys in the wild, the diet changes a little bit the older they get. Yeah. You know, right now, they can actually catch stuff. They're a lot quicker, yeah. so I'm sure once they, yeah, once they get hunters. older. These guys are a lot easier to feed because they're captive born. The imported adults, they usually don't fare too well. Yeah, they don't do too well. Yeah, because they're already set in their, you know, spe uh, specific diets. These yeah. tortoises are probably one of the pickiest eaters yeah. I've ever fed before. Yeah, you know, just a really bizarre but really beautiful species here. Also very crepuscular. Yeah, crepuscular. So if you guys don't know what that means, it means they're most active at dusk and at uh, dawn. Dawn. Dusk and dawn. Crepuscular. Yeah, these guys don't like bright lights at all. Yeah. So we keep them a little bit in a dimmer habitat. Uh, you know, these guys are from, or they live on the, on the forest floor obviously, so they're covered by canopy and you know they live in the leaf litter and stuff so they don't see as much light as other tortoises as grassland tortoises and stuff like that yeah definitely yeah. do better with a lot of humidity cool alrighty here are the Mediterranean tortoises um, there's probably about what three four different tortoises from the Mediterranean as you saw the Greek tortoises earlier also from the Mediterranean but uh, over here we have the marginated tortoises we have a little hatchling here and about a yearling over here so these are the marginated. And over here, we have, this is the Herman's tortoise, and also the Russian tortoise. Are you, gosh, everything likes peeing in my hands today. <laughs> Everybody. That means they're well hydrated, folks. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, the differences between the, as you can see, the Herman's and the marginated are pretty similar. But uh, there's some differences, as you can see the, the scoots here, they kind of have like an arrow shaped or a pointy shape. Uh, same here, and then these guys kind of have a square shape, the Hermans. And a yellower tint to them. The guys are so cute! I put the desert tortoise in, or desert box turtle in there somewhere too. Oh really? Yeah, he's probably very... Alright, maybe we won't. So this is where my area of expertise kicks in. This is one of my favorite species ever. This is G minus thing right here, he's set up in a vivarium. Um, so these guys need about 70%. Uh, of their enclosure is land and 30% water, so Mike did a great job with that. A plus job on that. I didn't know we were working in percentages here. <laughs> yeah. um, so he's kind of in this, back here in this log. I don't know if I can grab it. This is the Vietnamese black-breasted leaf turtle. These guys are like a mixture of an owl and a turtle. Look at the eyes on that thing. They have these huge white irises. It's obviously from Vietnam. Uh, they're called the black-breasted leaf turtle, as you can see from that awesome black plaster on there. And these guys are a very endangered species. <sighs> um, collection for the pet trade is a big thing. Um, also food. Also food. Uh, you know, typical of like any Asian turtle or tortoise. Um, but yeah, these guys are pretty cool. Uh, they go crazy for worms. They love their earthworms. Um, they're, they're omnivorous, so they also eat any fruits. Um, that we give them to. 
Um, and yeah, so these guys are, you don't find them very often in captivity. Um, there's actually a pretty strange thing going on with the males in captivity. Um, captive born males are having problems reproducing. Um, so, you know, imported males actually are having, are totally fine reproducing. But captive born males are having problems. So, there's something going on. We're not doing something right in captivity. We're not feeding them the right thing or something's going on to where their sperm count isn't, you know, sufficient. But yeah, just, you know, just a really beautiful species. One of my favorite species. Uh, there's another, only one other species in the genus Geomita, which is Ge Geomita japonica. Even more beautiful than this little guy. But yeah, just a, one of the most beautiful animals, coolest animals in my opinion. Um, and you know, we're trying to uh, establish huge assurance colonies of these guys uh, in the US, because you know, we don't know how long they will be left in the wild. Uh, they're really endangered, so uh, yeah. Hopefully we can get them all good and started here in the U.S. Very fun to watch eat. Yeah, very um, fun to watch eat. Yeah, like you said, they go crazy for worms. And you should have grabbed the bigger worms. Yeah, this one's kind of big. Awesome species. We'll move on to these guys down here. So here are the uh, brown, Burmese black and brown mountain tortoise. This is the black here. This is the brown here. Um, same species, sub, they, I don't know if they're classified as subspecies, or they're just localities, but, um, you know, another endangered species is the final endangered species we're gonna look at here. Um, from Burma, but Burma's not called Burma anymore, it's called Myanmar, or Myanmar. But yeah, you know, just a cool species. These guys are actually the fourth largest tortoise in the world, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these guys do get pretty big. Um, you know, they love high humidity, and they're actually, I, Kind of also look at them as yeah, also crepuscular. So you know that word, word we learned earlier. They love coming out at dawn and dusk. And I kind of think think of these guys like hippos. They love uh, mud baths. So that's kind of how I remember them. Love the high humidity and everything. Very flat tortoises. Yeah, va very flat. They're kind of like a pancake, but harder much. shell. Exactly. Larger size. Um, also very high humidity. Yeah. Uh, they don't do too well with bright lights. Yeah. Like a lot dimmer, like on the forest floor. Yeah, exactly. Last species we're gonna take a look at. Fun fact. Fun um, fact. Fun fact from my let's hear it. Nerd. This is uh, nerd research. Nerd so research. it's the only tortoise species that actually will guard their nest. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Back here at my house. Uh, this, this is the last species I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, this is Cora flava marginata. The Chinese box turtle, yellow marginated box turtle. If these guys wear many different names, um, you know, amazing species. The Cora genus is one of the most endangered genus of turtles in the world. And so, yeah, guys, just want to say thank you. Uh, thanks for watching, and definitely uh, thank you to Mike and uh, Erica for letting us use their collection. I'll put their Instagrams and everything in the description below. And thank you to Elliot uh, making this video awesome for me. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, don't forget to uh, check out Turtle. The Turtle Conservancy, um, the TTPG, uh, TSA, you know, those, those turtle conservation groups are really important to support. You know, you can get awesome t-shirts like this and, you know, support them and become members today. And, you know, money will go straight to um, field work, you know, field research, you know, helping endangered turtles and tortoises all over the world. So, yeah, guys, I just want to say thank you and, uh, yeah, that's been it.